Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there, Rulers. Welcome back to Ruler School. This is DMO73, bringing you a feature match for the week between myself on a blue-white Fenrir Loki list sent to me, or blue-white kind of black uh, Fenrir Loki list sent to me by Kaltuma, and I'm playing against Mark M from my locals, who is playing his take on Melgus. So let's gonna see how it goes. So this Fenrir list is a lot more reliant on Perfect Loki doing its judgment. Um, it is a 100% blue base build with some extra white white stones there's no Layla there's no altar there's no power of immortality it's pure blue white that we are using some black cards primarily ones that we're going to be grabbing off of setting up potential perfect will with dark Alice or that we're setting up with um, return of God so turn one Gwyn from um, Mark into turn one energize shadow of Kronos plus a look of corruption from me main reason to do this is if you can look of corruption on one against a uh, regalia deck and steal the regalia you can tend to get a lot of value very quickly uh, we end up stealing the shakti there because there is no laban hand which feels good for us um, but still something worth trying uh, we're going to see that um darkness fire dragon come down on mark's side before draw using shadow of chronos to kind of fix whatever we're going to potentially draw into and then um, at that point, I believe passing the turn back, the uh, Fenrir deck uses definitely the first couple of turns just to set up. We really want to try to go off once we can do Return of God on three stones. So we're kind of just playing this kind of defensive game, setup game, to make sure all of that goes off without a hitch. Swinging in with the Darkness Fire Dragon, we're going to go ahead and just stop ourselves from taking that damage early. May say, tell him he has to potentially recast it um, by using Bewildering Charm, put it back in his hand. Mark does play a Caduceus here. He's going to choose to get the 7-1 as the mode and then swing in for 7. We're fine with that. We're going to take that. It is going to turn on his Guinevere, which we're also okay with um, because he can use it to, you know, sacrifice and draw to discard one. So we're okay with that too. Ultimately, um, this also means that our Shadow of Kronos can kill his Gwyn unless he plays another one drop to be able to defend it um, because it, there's no real removal spell that's going to be able to kill the Shadow of Kronos. And since the Guinevere is tapped, we can just crash into it. So he'll get that one time value off of it and then we'll be able to um, get rid of it, which is very nice. Before draw, we're going to go ahead and see what our top card of our deck is. Looking at what's in our hand, choosing to mill. And then also before draw for turn, we're going to go ahead and cast Dark Alice. Choosing to discard. And then draw and discard again. And then moving to recover. I guess that was after draw. Either that or I missed drawing for turn, which is an error on my part. Calling Stone. I'm gonna go ahead and use one to do a um, reconnaissance. The reason to do this is to kind of dig and potentially see if we just need to bottom three cards. So essentially with doing reconnaissance into um, Return of God, which you'll see us do in just a second, it means we essentially get to look at 10 cards to see if there's an Athenia in there somewhere. We do unfortunately not hit a, a, a Athenia, but we do see the Mana Transmuter, which is still fine because it gets us access to extra will, um, which can be very beneficial, especially since we're going into um, Mark having a full free turn. And then again, we're gonna go ahead and swing in with that um, Shadow of Kronos to kill the Guinevere and get it off the board. Mark, unfortunately, no sword or uh, mage art to make use of the Caduceus here in the upkeep. Does have a Awakening of the Flame King, which is nice to kill the Shadow of Kronos, but it's not really going to hit much of anything else. So 
So Mark's position here is I've kind of given him an opportunity to potentially burst out damage, um, but he did have to call stone and we don't see a Leviton in his hand. So the potential of being able to do that is low, unfortunately. Um, it's just something that this deck can kind of struggle to do sometimes. So down comes a snake. Interesting to see this in the main board. This is Or um, Orboros. That Darkness Fire Dragon is going to come back down. Uh, and then the Regalia is going to go ahead and tap out to try to boost up the snake to be uh, get those four counters on it. It's fine with me, though, because ultimately um, we're going to be drawing it into a lot of stuff and we're potentially setting up for a Dark Alice, or sorry, a Perfect Loki to be able to kind of wipe here. Um, you see we used the uh, Mana Transmuter on his turn to flash in Dark Alice, draw, discard, draw, discard, sets up for Perfect Loki there, and then we get to draw for turn, producing, uh, I believe, blue with Mana Transmuter, blue with the will, and then using Fenrir from hand to produce black. So we get to flip over Loki, switches into Perfect Loki, uh, and Mark's completely tapped out here, so we know that the board is going to be enough to be wiped. So now we get to look at these 10 cards and see what we hit. Ultimately, any copies of Fenrir we want to mill, uh, because that means that we get to bring them right into the field. This deck, like I said, is much more reliant on the perfect Loki flip and generating that free value with the Fenrirs while also doing the stat nag. Cards go to Grave, and then to check to see if there was a Fenrir, there was one, and just the one. So, essentially, we paid one stone um, to and three life uh, to swing, get to put out all this pressure and have uh, the access to all those cards in the Grave now for Perfect Loki. And now we're sitting on three will for his turn after swinging in for the eight that we can use to kind of counter whatever he wants to do. Which I believe includes having a perfect Loki in hand, I think, if we really need to. Mark deciding to call stone. Still not seeing a lay in, unfortunately. Plays a Percival. Kind of see what we're going to try to dig into. Opening the red eyes, another Caduceus. A... Um, Bloody Break, and then a Leviton. I think there was potential cause to not call Stone, to like play the Percival first, see if you hit a Leviton, and then decide whether or not you were gonna call Stone. Ultimately choosing here to try to pay four to play the Blazer, to try to remove the Imperishable and kill the Perfect Loki. Um, unfortunately, we're gonna go ahead and um, pay the three life that way, go down to 24, um, and just use the Erendite that we milled to the grave to cancel the effect. Uh, and at that point, Mark is gonna say, nope, nothing I can do, scoop it up, and let's go to game two. As we go into the next game, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you're notified when all of our videos goes live, and consider supporting the channel by being a member here on YouTube or by checking it out on Patreon for all the cool exclusive perks that come with supporting us. Thank you guys so much, let's go to the next game. So in game two here, Mark choosing to take the draw, I believe. Definitely something the deck wants to try to do, you know, Melgus, if Melgus can do like a turn two um, Melgus flip, especially against a deck like Loki. Um, sometimes Loki just can't keep up. Um, you know, the, the bounce spell can only do so much if we don't get a good setup. Um, we could just take all that damage and then don't have a way to reestablish. Blue Stone, uh, not having a turn one play. Calling Stone for Mark. Heat Ray. I think at this point, maybe it's potentially choosing to pass back to me as well. I don't see any one drops in hand there. Looks like a couple of awakenings, a blazer, um, an opening the red eyes. Oh, realizing that he missed a draw card for turn. Oh, and a bloody break. And he does see the lave there, so this is nice. So this is good for him to potentially be able to go off next turn, um, just being able to um, make those plays. Pre upkeep, we're gonna go ahead and use Bewildering Charm to draw a card. We really wanted to see just something better. Thankfully, we did in the form of that Fenrir. Um, so now we're set up to be able to potentially turn three flip. 
we're gonna go ahead and um, do the same play we did before saying if he had a stalled out turn we want to make sure he can't burst us so let's go ahead and see if we can hit it there is that Levitt in there so we got pretty lucky um, that he had drawn into it and we were able to rip that out of his hand definitely keeps us a lot more safe um, and it's something that uh, perfect Loki I think definitely has to um, contend with in what they're dealing with at this moment Down comes the Percival. Seeing if maybe he can get another Levitin. Unfortunately not. We see Double Shakti opening the Red Guinevere and the Darkness Fire Dragon. Still has two available wheel will here. Could burn it to play the Shakti. I don't necessarily agree with that decision. Um, ultimately though, just does decide to play it. Just maybe to put the pressure on board um, and set up for potential next turn being able to do Awakening of the Flame King twice off of just three will, um, which would be a very good value. He is tapped out though, so we kind of get to do whatever we want here. We're seeing once again the um, rec reconnaissance trick. Um, this is primarily used to just make sure that we have the best chance possible um, to uh, hit an Athenia. Um, forgetting to draw I think I misplayed both times there forgetting to draw a card off of the reconnaissance totally unintentional it is scry three draw one uh, for sorry four c3 draw one um, so that is important to note um, Athenia goes off here recover three Second return of Gone from Hand. If you get a either Mana Transmuter or another Athenia here would be a massive amount of value because we'll get to float that one will off of that stone um, and then recover to three stones. Do hit the Athenia here, so now I can choose to float some will. Choosing to float white, I believe. The other nice thing of Shadow of Kronos is it lets us use Darkness Will pretty effectively, um, which is great when you consider the fact that we also have uh, Athenia's Love in the rune deck. Um, so when we hit the Athenia, we kind of have this one drop removal spell that also just helps us keep our boards safe. It's also very good in the mirror. Um, if your opponent like flips a perfect Loki at an, an opportune time, you can just kind of give everybody eternal and survive through it uh, and then kind of punish back. Dark Alice using the floating wheel there and then passing to um, Mark. So sitting pretty steady, full grip of uh, white, blue, and black. Um, just kind of seeing what he's gonna do here. We're gonna go ahead and cast the Awakening of the Flame King. Um, it's gonna trigger the Shakti to attempt to do some, uh, cast a second copy. Um, this would wipe both dark, everything off the board um, and put me really behind because you get to put out two bodies. So we have Aaron Light to be able to stop the Shakti trigger so it's not getting cloned. Um, we're gonna go ahead and um, use the uh, Bewildering Charm that's in my hand here to bounce the Percival back to his hand. Mark choosing to let that happen rather than banish to burn something. And then we're going to go ahead and use the last will there to do, after that Bewildering Charm resolves, to do the Athenia's Love with both modes, forcing him to sacrifice the Shakti and giving all my guys eternal. So I, they all take the four damage, but none of them will die for this turn. And then he has to cheat and have drop, ultimately choosing to play the Shakti there. So a pretty good turn of just like stealing that value from Mark. Um, before draw, we're going to go ahead and use the... Um, Shadow of Kronos, which was going to mill a Fenrir, so it gets to draw into my hand anyway, and then I get to draw a card for turn. Choosing to call stone, we're going to go ahead and do an invitation. This is because we need a perfect Loki. It lets us go grab any card we want, so we might as well use it to go grab perfect Loki. And at this point in time, the only rune we have left is Neo Ragnarok, um, if we need it. Um, swinging in for eight with Athenia. Swinging in with another eight. Does decide to take that as well. Go down to 24. And then at that point in time, we're just going to go ahead and pass the turn. So stealing that regalia off the top has been very, very helpful. Um, Mark has just not been able to see a second regalia quite yet. He does have that Percival, so he could play it. 
Um, he hasn't called stone yet, so play it and then potentially get another um, Regalia off of it. We see Ouroboros, um, Volga, there's the Leviton, uh, a Caduceus, and then a Darkest Fire Dragon. We're clearly going to grab the Leviton. Um, we can cast it this turn and kind of start to go off. So we'll kind of see exactly what modes Mark is going to choose here. Obviously, Judgment for Zero is probably a thought. Um, but also, you know, maybe Stranger, maybe the Seven One. We'll see what happens. Does decide to bring in the Stranger, or sorry, Judgment for Zero, and grab a Seven One, and then chooses to go right into Judgment, which I think was a little bit of a mistake. Uh, I think before you do any of that, you at least try to swing in, um, just in case, potentially taking one of my guys here. Um, bef as he attempts to perform judgment, but before the judgment resolves, so before Melgus actually enters the field, we're going to flash in the perfect Loki, which deals minus nine to his board, um, because of where we're at right now after milling one with the, um, after milling one with the shadow of Kronos. So, um, Melgus is going to come in as a 10 one, uh, his stranger is potentially going to immediately come in and die. See, he gets the Azazel that's immediately going to get killed. I do take the two damage from it, but the main reason why we did this is we wanted to steal his god art on the turn that he judgmented. We didn't want him to be able to burst that out, and if he doesn't have a unit to be able to sacrifice with his god uh, with um, on this board, then he doesn't have a way to do god art, which puts us in a really good position, especially if we kill his Melgus the next turn. We just kind of stole that god art from him. Melgus has got it also is a great way for Mark to be able to potentially refill his hand. Uh, and so setting it up like this makes it so that we kind of get the most, uh, remove as much of the value as possible from the Melgus flip. He's also not going to bother swinging because at that point in time, um, I mean, he could technically could swing in um, because it does have first strike. Um, but at that point in time, he knows he's not going to connect. So there's no real reason. I'll just throw the Dark Atlas under the bus uh, and then he'll be tapped and completely vulnerable on my turn. Trying for turn. Moving to recover. Starting by going straight into combat, I believe. You see we have double Fender in hand. Does decide to block with the Melgus, so the Athena is going to die. That's okay. She's done her job at this point. We're going to throw the um, Alice under the bus there. Swing in with the perfect Loki. Mark decides to take that. Go down to 16. Attempt to swing in with the Athena. Mark does decide to use Bloody Break to get the Athenia out of the way. We don't really care about that. Athenia has done her job in kind of establishing that first pre uh, first pressure value. Um, so if he's wasting a removal spell on that versus our perfect Loki, we feel a lot better. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and look up Corruption here to steal kind of whatever potential follow-up play there is here. See, there's a Percival, two Awakening of the Flame Kings, and then that Blazer. Um, we're definitely taking the Percival um, because the Awakening of the Flame Kings don't matter and it costs them a lot. Um, because it can't kill the perfect Loki. We have, um, in hand, I think at this point, we have access to an Erendite with um, Awakening to potentially kill the Blazer if he tries to pay for it that way. Um, so there's a lot of potential to just like steal a ton of value off of this um, play. I'm not really concerned about either of those cards, whereas the Percival potentially draws him into something better. Um, so we want him to be kind of set with a dead hand does decide to play the blazer here is going to target the uh, perfect loki i believe and so at that point in time we're going to awaken the erendite to cancel the effect and destroy it and which leaves him with just those two floating will we're going to go ahead and mill a card then draw for turn mana transmuter is practically worthless at this point in time because we're kind of up We've got plenty of ac we got access to plenty of will. We're calling stone anyway this turn because um, we don't have another perfect Loki in hand. Um, so we're just going to mill it and draw, trying to draw on something better. Swing in with the perfect Loki to take him down to eight. Again, we know that his hand is an un at this point in time is two unknowns and two awakening of the flame kings. So with five will up, I do have a bewildering charm in hand. You see, I have a Fenrir. Um, and the Shadow of Kronos to potentially set up to be able to get another Perfect Loki next turn. Ultimately, our and a, or buff up the defense of Perfect Loki as well. Ultimately, I think our thought process is here to try to bounce the Perfect Loki back to our hand with Bewildering Charm, uh, and then proceed right into a Judgment um, to finish the game off that way.
Mark choosing to float the will here. Seems like he's going to cast Leviton. One thing to note, as we've talked about before, you don't have to float the will um, until after. You can stack the triggers so that the mythic trigger to sack your regalia will resolve after your triggers for your ruler. So especially if you're grabbing a stranger, you can choose to see what stranger you're going to get before you eventually burn out the damage or the will just to make sure you accidentally don't produce the wrong will. Um, you produce the most efficient will possible for whatever stranger you get. We do see the Regulus. Um, he doesn't have to show me that. Um, does decide to use the floating will to play the Regulus. I think it probably would have been better for him to, just to be able to get the Shadow of Chronos off board, um, to use one of those Awakening of the Flame Kings, burn the board four and, and swing it and get the Regulus into play. Um, it would have been the same amount of will and it would have gotten the um, Shadow of Kronos off the board. So his 7-1 would have had a free swing in. Not that I'm particularly concerned about the Shadow of Kronos uh, dying or the taking the 7. Um, but you see here now, yeah, he's going to use the Awakening of the Flame King um, to burn the board 4 and cheat in a guy. The Shadow of Kronos is going to die here anyway. So he could have just been a little bit more will efficient. Um, chooses not to cheat in a dude. He's just going to burn it, even though he has access to an Ouroboros. Um, it's going to swing the Regulus into the perfect Loki, at which point we're going to do that play, like I said before, bounce it back to our hand. And then the 7, go down to 31. This leaves Mark with one open will, and at this point in time, he's got a single unknown, uh, and then the Awakening of the Flame King. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and remove the, uh, we don't have access to black, but we do have the Fenrir, so we can just do the judgment of perfect Loki and flip in. And at that point in time, Mark says, there's nothing I can do there. And that's the end of the game. So there you guys have it. I hope you guys liked it. The deck list for the Fenrir Loki will be up later this weekend, um, as well as our pre-release live footage. So be sure to join us for that. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.